1,800 students at least in the um, preliminary survey last week that uh, indicated they'd be coming back. And I just, you know, with our classrooms and with classes being, you know, in the mid 30s, there's just gonna be no way to keep kids six feet apart. We will be able to use the masks. We will have some traffic flow going on, um, but otherwise it's gonna be business as usual. The Roseville Virtual Learning Academy is all online, every class online. Students attend four classes synchronously that um, are at the same time as Granite Bay classes. So that means we're on the same bell schedule. There are some special circumstances um, and those are very rare. And I'm gonna emphasize that, that the situation has to be unique and compelling. But let's say you're an IB student who has already signed up for an end of the year exam. So you've got to remain in IB History of the Americas. So in that case, you would be in the Roseville Virtual Learning Academy for your other three classes. If, if it's three, maybe there's more IB classes that you're in. And you would be able to zoom in to your IB course. So in that case, you're going to sign up for coming on ground to Granite Bay so that we can work that out and figure out what your schedule looks like. There's a lot of complications as far as, you know, um, I'm thinking IB business is fourth period. So if that conflicts with a virtual academy class, we may have to, you know, do some special arranging for those. But they are unique circumstances, a class you absolutely have to have. We would do that. Um, unique situations. So those are your three, there's two choices and then there's the unique special circumstance which we have to work through with each family and it's got to be very compelling before we would do that. Um, it might be a capstone class in the CTE program, maybe you've done all your engineering classes, you're a senior, you've got to take that final engineering design and development class, so that would be something that we could zoom you in to see what the on ground students are doing if you're wanting to be fully online. Um, in person learning at Granite Bay High School, I've mentioned a lot of this, but all classes are taken at Granite Bay High School five days per week. Masks are required. There's a daily health screening required. Hand washing, sanitizing stations placed throughout campus. Students are required to stay at Granite Bay High School for the remainder of the term. So you wouldn't be dropping out and transferring to the virtual academy. Their staffing um, and population is going to be set. Um, your current spring schedule may change, even if you're coming back to come on ground. Um, it says, please check areas for schedule updates. That's not going to happen overnight. But um, to put it in a nutshell, we will be losing some teachers to the virtual academy. And therefore, we will be losing some sections dep depending upon how many students go to the virtual academy. And therefore your teacher may change, uh, the order of your classes may change. We may have to close some courses, just depends all on enrollment and how many teachers we have. Um, any leave of absences, leaves of absence that come forward, we're, we're having to deal with those individually. So. Not right now, but when we get to closer to the end of the fall term, you're gonna to wanna to check and see if any changes have been made on your schedule if you're coming back on ground to Granite Bay High School. Um, now, knowing that the class delivery model may change if all of a sudden conditions worsen and we're ordered to go back you know, into hybrid two days a week or we actually have to go back to full distance learning, that's all determined you know, above and beyond Granite Bay High School, but just know that that caveat is always there. Um, as far as in the virtual academy, all courses are taken online for the entire spring term. You still are technically a Granite Bay High School student, so you have access to all of our activities and our athletics. Um, I don't imagine a lot of large group activities, but you know, uh, graduation, things like that, you're definitely still our student. Your diploma will say you're from Granite Bay High School. Um, in this academy, you will be continuing to work towards graduation. So that means all of the courses are A through G approved. They're taught by district 
credentialed teachers. So I think everyone's clear on that, but just to make sure it's not necessarily a Granite Bay teacher that your student or you as a student would get. Um, the virtual academy will be staffed by um, teachers that need to remain online and then in, they apply and then it's based on seniority and credentials. So it could be that we send, you know, maybe six teachers to the academy, but Roseville High School might be sending 15 and Oakmont might be sending 20. It's all based on student signups um, and how many students you're losing from your site. So I just want to be clear that if you go to the virtual academy, you are not necessarily going to have Granite Bay High School teachers. Um, the courses will be taught in a synchronous format and aligned with the school ske schedule, meaning first period will be at the same time, second period, et cetera, et cetera. And also, this is almost 100% sure, <laughs> your current spring schedule will most likely have to change in order to fit into the much more limited amount of course offerings in the virtual academy. Now, if you are a freshman, there's not a lot of special courses other than your elective that would change. Um, they're gonna have PE, they're gonna have English, they're gonna have Spanish, uh, they're gonna have um, uh, health, you know, all of those courses that all of our freshmen take, all of the math courses. But if you're, uh, especially junior or senior, for sure, your uh, schedule will look different in the academy. Uh, here are the online courses. I know these were emailed to you over the weekend, but just in case you were wondering, um, they based the offerings on the signups they received. They looked at the students who signed up in the initial survey and any AP course that had 25 or more signups, they decided to offer in the virtual academy. So initially we said no AP, but you can see there's quite a few in here the AP European History for Sophomores, AP US History for Juniors, AP Lang for Juniors, AP Calculus, uh, AP Statistics, those are usually juniors and seniors in there, AP Human Geography, which is another sophomore through senior level course. They added all of these electives down here. So um, the Virtual Academy does have a lot more than initially thought. I know that you have that in your email, so I won't spend too much time there, but there, there's our course offerings. Um, special education and English learners. This is a lot harder to explain because we haven't completely figured this out. Now with special education, my understanding right now at this time is that there aren't going to be academic labs in the academy. That they will still have a Granite Bay High School case manager. They're um, going to be taken care of. They'll still have all of their services and their IEP will be in place. This right here, I'm just gonna open it briefly and close it. Um, but this I believe was sent out, um, which is an explanation about how special education will work. And if you didn't get this and you're interested in it, um, we can, I think Mr. Sloan could put it maybe in Q&A. Can you do that now? If not, email me later and I will make sure that you see it. But I think this went out to parents. I'll put it in chat. Okay, cool. All right. Now I just lost all my settings. Zoom share. Move this back over here. Are we there? Okay. I'm going to do this. No, I'm not. Hang on just a second. And put my notes back over here to just make sure. Whoops, not that. That. Well, that was fine. I will never open another attachment. Okay. Are we good to go? Mr. Sloan, are we still seeing the screen here? Yeah, um, yes, we are presenting those. Okay. Wow. This is just. Not great. Okay, hang on. You mind just stepping in here real quick and telling me what thing I hit wrong? Making full here. screen? Yeah. Okay, and then there we go. Your square. Yeah. Okay, we're back in business. Okay, so English learners. Um, 
they they will have um, EL courses in the Roseville Virtual Academy, and more information is available on the fact stock, which I believe was also sent out. But again, um, anyone who has any questions on these special programs, feel free to email and I will um, try to get those to you. Um, sample student schedules, all in-person classes will be on the Granite Bay High School campus. Full Rose, uh, Roseville Virtual Academy that would be all online, online, and then there's unique and compelling circumstances. Oh dear. Okay, we're back in business now? Okay, so I'm gonna move us on here. Here's a sample schedule. So if you come back as, let's say you're a senior, um, this maybe is your schedule. And this is nothing new to most of you, but you would have these four classes. They're all uh, at Granite Bay High School. There's four periods in your day. Okay, a full Roseville Virtual Learning Academy schedule. Um, perhaps this is what your schedule looks like. Your elective is second period and it's multimedia, it's something that we don't normally offer at Granite Bay. So that's kind of exciting, something different, kind of a more of, um, learning about computer graphics and graphic design and things like that. Um, and you, you might take pre-calc and you might take GovEcon. So if there's a special circumstance, and again, these are unique and compelling, but let's say that first period virtually through the Roseville Academy, you've got English 12, but that you zoom in to your project lead the way capstone course that you need in order to earn that certificate. And then you go back to your virtual courses in the academy. So there's another sample. Um, now here are bell schedules that I wanna take you through. And these are all proposals, nothing's been decided. I'll tell you a little bit about each one. This would be um, just five day schedule with 80 minute class periods. We've had a lot of people asking for 80 minute class periods. If we have 80 minute class periods, then we would need to embed a lunch period in. So just here, um, note again, that if we have kids here for lunch, masks are gonna come off, they're gonna be eating. There's about 1800 of them. If there's rain, they're possibly in the cafeteria. So we're a little concerned about the spread if we were to hold that on-campus lunch. But this is a proposal a lot of people would like to have 80-minute classes back. Here's 70-minute periods. Right now we have 60, as you know, during the hybrid. But let's say there's 70-minute periods. This includes uh, a lunch as well, but students would go home during lunch and then uh, do hub online as they do now. This doesn't include a nutrition break or anything. They just kind of go all the way through quickly. Um, 60 minute periods, if we end up back in this mixed hybrid schedule for any reason, it's possible that we could end up with this, but the first two are really the two that are um, under consideration right now. And if we go fully distance learning, then we would, um, have something similar to this right here because all kids would be at home and um, able to have uh, much longer breaks in between classes. So they need that break because they would be on the computer so long. Okay, I'm gonna move right into uh, our positive, uh, our contact tracing. This is what happens when I hear of a positive COVID test. So I'm switching gears right now so that those of you coming on campus know that this is how it works. Uh, first of all, the school nurse is notified. So somebody might say something to me, might say something to one of the coaches, might say something to a teacher, et cetera, et cetera. Um, then the nurse contacts the family and staff. So before any of those emails go out, and I know this caused a lot of concern, um, with the first email I sent out, we're not gonna send anything until the people affected have been spoken with live <laughs> to make sure that they understand. Um, then the next step is the nurse is gonna gather info from the family, from the student gathering of what are your symptoms? Um, have you 
Where, when did you test? When was your last day on campus? Who are your friends? Were you hanging out with a bunch of friends? Who else do we need to contact? And then the nurse will notify me. And then I actually notify the district leadership. And each case is so unique that usually I have to sit down with my liaison and figure out what is the smartest thing to do. Um, that contact tracing is the next step. Amount of time spent with others on campus or where on campus they may have been. And remember, exposure is defined as 15 minutes within six feet of some, a positive case. Then you've been exposed. Now, I want to mention that when I send my email out saying a staff member has tested positive, and as you know, I've done that twice, staff member covers a lot of people. Staff member could be custodian, could be a coach, could be a paraeducator, could be a librarian, could be a teacher, could be a walk-on coach that's only here once a week, could be somebody, a clerical staff, could be a counselor. So I think a lot of people went straight to teacher and panicked. Um, just keep in mind that I'm going to say staff member, and that's as narrow as I'm going to make it because of confidentiality, but don't assume uh, somebody wrote somewhere in one of their questions something about two classes have been quarantined. That's actually untrue. So I don't know where that rumor came from, but just be aware of the fact that we have over 150 staff members. And if they have tested positive, it doesn't mean that they contracted it on this campus or that they spread it on this campus. It just means they tested positive and they were on this campus. That's it. Okay. Um, so then we create that list of contacts and then also the nurse notifies County Public Health. They keep track of things. They consult on um, what should happen next. And then all the close contacts are notified. Um, they are called as well. Then I send a follow-up letter with specifics about how long they need to be on quarantine and when their first date back on campus can be. Now, um, right now we have a lot of kids in the C group, which is online, but if they're coming on campus for any athletic events, or if they were together with kids who are in group A or B who are coming on campus, that might be a way that it kind of grows. That's why we are concerned with even kids in C who might test positive. And then um, principal notifies the staff and actually, um, it goes through the entire district. So I first start with staff and then I notify you, the families, and then the district notifies everyone. So that's the protocol. Probably more information than you wanted, but hopefully it makes you feel pretty good about um, that we do have a system in place and we're very accurate and very detailed. Um, there is a COVID guidebook available through the district. I didn't attach that for obvious reasons, but know that um, I believe it's been sent out to you. But again, if you would like it, um, you can send me that later. Um, all safety guidelines will continue to be in place on campus except for six feet of social distancing, as I've mentioned. Okay, so now I'm going to move into the frequently asked questions and I'm going to briefly um, answer each and then we'll move into uh, any questions that you may have above and beyond that. What will on-ground classroom instruction look like? Well, I anticipate it being, I was gonna say business and us as usual, but we're, what is the usual, right? It's gonna look like what it looked like before March 13th. So um, the, I, it is not going to be Zoom any longer other than kids that might be Zooming in for special circumstances. So it's going to be um, more interactive. Uh, it's gonna be what you would usually expect to see in a classroom um, with uh, you know, 25 to 35 excited teenagers and a teacher that's managing that room and spending all of their attention uh, with that room. So that's what it's gonna look like. Why, aren't, why don't we stay in the hybrid? Well, first of all, um, many, you all received my email uh, in the fall. Um, hybrid is, really tough on kids and really tough on students and very expensive for a variety of reasons. Um, we had to end up, we covered classrooms of teachers that are still in remote teaching. 
So we have basically two teachers assigned to one class. So it turned out to be very expensive with a virtual academy. It's clean. We've got all of the uh, remote people in one place and all of the on-ground people in one place. Um, it's very difficult for teachers to manage two classrooms simultaneously. They have to focus on one or the other. And right now they're focusing on their online students. So we're, I would say we have an average of three to 10 students in each class right now during the hybrid. And um, they are quietly sitting at their desk and acting as a participant on Zoom. So a lot of what we miss about traditional school, about the social side, the interactive side, um, working in groups, those kinds of things are very limited in the hybrid. So we've had the intention of moving to on ground in January. And so that is still the plan unless conditions change. But there's a lot of reasons why hybrid is difficult to maintain. I'm not saying we couldn't end up there again at some point, but um, it's very costly, it's very limiting. And the very same things that our students and you want for your students, all of that social side um, and the live interaction, that just doesn't exist right now in the hybrid. What is the deciding factor for hybrid versus distance learning versus on ground? Well, as I mentioned, the plan is to follow our intention to bring everyone onto campus in January. Now the board will make a binding decision at the December 15th meeting. So the colored tiers the state is using have no bearing on any mandate regarding closing schools. It doesn't matter what tier we're in, we actually can open schools as long as we do it safely. So once open, we will stay open unless 5% or more of our on-campus population, so that would be about 100 if the numbers remain the same. If we have about 100 students that test positive for COVID, then we would go into distance learning for about two weeks. Um, all the schools in the district would go into distance learning um, if we meet that 5% rate um, across the district. For, so for us, if two of our schools, two of our six comprehensive sites, well, I guess this wasn't, would include our others to our um, alternates. Um, if two of them had to shut down, then all of them would, because that would end up being about 5% of the total. So hope that helps a little bit for you to know, but the board is the one who would make the decision. How late can Roseville Joint Union High School District change plans and go back to distance learning if required by state regulations? So I assume you mean as like what happened last March 13th when they said closed, we're going to distance learning. So they can make that decision whenever they want. Uh, a special meeting can always be called. Generally, they're gonna use the regularly scheduled meetings, but they could call a meeting as late as January 4th and say, nope, we're not coming on ground, we're going into distance learning. So that's one of those factors where we're just gonna have to see what happens. Which factors determine which spring sample bell schedule is used? So again, remember exposure is 15 minutes within six feet of a positive case. So I think we'll be responding to conditions. I do not think we're gonna have a lunch period with all 1800 kids masks off eating unless we're feeling pretty positive about um, our numbers. And again, I won't make that decision. All of our schools will be on the same schedule and the board will be determining that. But again, with students eating masks off, possibly in the cafeteria during, during rainy and stormy weather, um, that's, that's a little daunting to me as I'm trying to make sure everybody's safe. What about students who are quarantined for 10 days? So. Yes, this is bound to happen. Uh, so in that case, we if any absence that is generated from us, if we say you're on quarantine, then you are going to be able to zoom into your class for those 10 days that you have to quarantine. It may be that your teacher will record lectures and have you watch them later. That's one possibility. We still have to work those kinks out, but we're not gonna have you sit at home with no instruction for 10 days. So we'll take care of that for sure. Which AP or IB courses can be taken online next term? So again, I showed you the list of the AP courses. So those are the, the ones in the virtual academy are the only ones 
that will be offered online. For IB, because IB is not in the academy, and we have IB students who have paid for exams, we have IB students at the end of a long, uh, rigorous two-year program, we're going to allow them to zoom in to the on-ground class, just keeping in mind that we're going to be focused on students in the classroom. So it'll be a little different experience than zooming in is at the current time. What about the four-way econ gov block? So if you're a senior in that right now, you actually have earned all of the credits that you need to fulfill taking that class, even though you're halfway through. You've completed micro econ and you can take two of the three exams. You can take your AP Gov exam, you can take your micro econ exam. The only thing you wouldn't be prepared for would be your macro econ exam. So if you still want to take the macro econ test and you've registered for it, because I know we're doing that right now, um, we'll work out a similar arrangement for you. This will be one of those special circumstances that I've referenced, but you actually don't have to stay in it just in order to graduate. What about electives such as advanced journalism or Spanish 4? So we are telling people you need to come on ground for most electives. Um, there are some offered through the academy, as I showed you before, if you decide to go that route. Again, it would have to be a very unique and compelling situation. I put Spanish 4 on there because it could be that there's a senior that they need that Spanish 4 in order to get their seal of biliteracy. And Spanish 4 is not offered in the virtual academy. So that might be something that we could work out in a Zoom situation as well. Uh, it's just, it will be different to take, it will be difficult to take a language class if you're the only one Zooming in and um, everybody else is interacting. I mean, teachers will figure it out. We want to help our students as much as we can. I wish we could address every single situation, but we just don't, we don't have the, the capability to do that. So we want to make sure everybody gets what they need in order to graduate. And, um, you know, we're in the middle of a pandemic, so we're going to just do the best we can. Do seniors have to take four classes? Okay, so once again, 240 minutes of instruction is required right now. So you may have noticed if you have a senior who has an off period, they either have to show proof of being enrolled in a college course or re-enroll them in study skills. And they have to fill out a daily engagement form that tells us what they are working on each day. Now, if we go to the 80 minute uh, class period schedule, then a senior could take three classes and have fulfilled that. So it depends really on the length of where the classes end up. But as of now, they would have to take four classes. One of those classes could be study skills that we offer. But um, anything less than that, I would say, I think I have a screen coming up on this. Yes, independent studies option. We don't have one at Granite Bay High School, but we do have Independence High School. I would say reach out to your counselor to discuss if this is a good fit for you. Um, you uh, should only be used if you don't need a full schedule in order to graduate. If you've got one or two classes left, you might want to reach out to your counselor and see if this is a good idea. Um, we don't we don't have that option through Granite Bay. It would not be Granite Bay teachers, but you still would get your Granite Bay diploma in this case. Normally, that's not how it works, but because of the unique situation we're in right now, that would be an option. Um, will online be on the transcript and or have an impact on college admission processes? I can't see how it would since, you know, the world's dealing with this right now. It's the same course codes as always. Nothing's going to say taken online and um, your, your transcript will still say Granite Bay High School, it won't say anything about online. So no worries in this area. Does the school conduct testing if someone has symptoms? So the nurse may recommend testing because of moving back to that contact trace, tracing. Uh, if, if you've been you know, within six feet of someone for 15 minutes within a 24 hour time period that has tested positive, but we don't do the testing. Um, most of the time, it takes about two days to get results. We can't, you can be tested through the county. 
I can get that information if you need, usually the nurse will share that information. And I believe that testing is free, but we don't actually conduct uh, testing. Um, when will we get updates about school sports and when they will be starting? Well, the plan hasn't changed as of yet. December 7th, football starts and December 14th, the other normally fall season, they're called first season sports, would be starting. We'll send updates as soon as we get them. We haven't had any in a long time. And again, I would imagine that this will be um, related to the environment and conditions. Okay, so that's all of your frequently asked questions. Um, just as a final reminder, and I believe I was unclear on this, so I want to clarify it. I know it feels like you're filling out a lot of forms, but last week's form was a survey. This is your final binding choice. So even if you're coming on ground, you need to fill out the form. And it basically says, are you signing up for the academy? Yes or no. <laughs> and so this is your final enrollment decision. It is binding. We're staffing things. We're changing things on the master schedule according to this choice. And it's due tonight by 11.59. All right, so you're either signing up for in-person instruction five days a week on the Granite Bay High School campus or the all online instruction. Okay, there is also um, virtual learning academy frequently asked questions, but I am not going to press on this because it was a disaster last time and you can't read it anyway. Again, if you haven't seen the frequently asked questions and the answers, email and um, we'll be happy to send that to you. So at this point, whew, that was a lot of talking really fast. Um, I think Mr. Sloan has been answering some questions in Q&A, and now Mr. Griffin has been- Can you make him a, make him a host? You can't oh, him. okay. Yes, I will make him a host. Um, Mr. Griffin is keeping track of raised hands in the order in which they came in, and he's going to call on you. I've got to make him a co-host so that he can help to unmute people. Okay. We good, Levert? Yes. So um, first person we have is uh, Pad Mini. So I'm gonna unmute you. So can can you say who's first again? Yes. Uh, Hello. Pad, Pad Mini. Oh, there she is. Okay. Hi. 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 How are you, Miss Layton? I'm good. Thank you. Um, so a quick question for you is um, just like you have a course list for the um online learning academy do you have a similar course list for the in-person uh classes uh -huh. that is a great question right now i would say our regular course catalog we're planning to offer that the one caveat is <laughs> i don't know who's leaving and if they take any um if they are normally my only person that teaches a particular class and they go to the academy or they take a leave of absence, I may have to close a few classes. But as of now, my plan is to, to continue to offer everything that we said we were going to offer before COVID hit. So whatever you signed up for last February, we're gonna to try to honor that in as many cases as possible. Okay, and then one final question is, once we make our selection today, Yes. Uh, when do we find out the final course schedule as to meaning, let's say I have taken cl courses A, B, C, and D, and due to staff changes, let's say D is gone away, D goes away, and uh -huh. now I'm forced to take F. So mm -hmm. when, at what po point do I find that out? That my <laughs> That's a great selected question. course has been, yeah. has changed. <laughs> yeah, because you'd probably like to know that, right? Um, yes. <laughs> so the, um, the last teachers can apply for the academy through Tuesday, next Tuesday, the last set of teachers. And then the academy, Mike Fisher, Mr. Fisher, who works out of cur the curriculum department is going to determine the staffing. And um, after that staffing is determined, then Mr. Sloan and I, who work on master schedule will start furiously um, moving stuff around if we need to, depending on who we've lost staff wise. Now, the other thing that I didn't mention with this virtual academy is that it's possible 
that we will have some teachers transferred. Uh, let's say at Oakmont High School, they they have so you know I'm making this up, but they have. 300 kids that want to be in the virtual academy. So they are going to have to lose some teachers, but maybe the vir they don't get hired by the virtual academy, but maybe some of mine get hired by the virtual academy. So now I've got these openings. So I might end up with some teachers from other sites, from Wood Creek, from Oakmont, from Antelope, from West Park. I mean, it, it's, it's wide open. So it's going to be a couple weeks, but we will, as soon as we've made updates, we'll make sure that we email that out because uh, we realize you're going to... Um, want to see that as soon as possible, and you're going to be working together with your counselors on your schedule. Okay, thank you so much. You're welcome. So um, next we have Arshia. You say say the name. Hello. Arshia. Oh yeah. Hello. Here's... This is Arshia. Hi Arshia. Um, hello, Mrs. Layton, and hello to all our teachers. Um, at Granite Bay, we really appreciate how during this pandemic, you guys have all really turned things around and continued to teach our kids and given them some way to function through this. So let me start by thanking you all for that. Thank it's you, a Sam. hard time for everyone, um, but we appreciate it. Um, our, my daughter, our daughter is a senior uh -huh. in high school, um, difficult time for all kids. Uh -huh. But the two questions I'd like to ask you is, First, you had mentioned that if you put someone on quarantine, mm -hmm. then you will let them zoom in for the in-person classes. Yes. If someone is exposed to COVID outside of school, say I'm at work, I get exposed, and so she's exposed mm -hmm. to me, does, do you allow, are you covering that or not? Well, I would think we would. I'm assuming because that makes a I big just, I guess, difference. Yeah, yeah. I think we would, you would communicate with us the reasons for your child to need to stay home and then we would work that out. What I don't want to get into is everybody who feels like, eh, I don't feel like going to school today. I'm going to zoom in and then we end up with, you know, the whole class oh. zooming in again. But if but, they have symptoms, they have yes, They have to stay home. Absolutely. So, well, but we, if someone has a fever, you don't want them to yeah, we don't want them if they have a fever. We would like them. Someone to is stop. sick. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We'll and work in out those circumstances, problem. they would be allowed to zoom in. Yeah, I, I think that they would. Again, I don't want to end up with okay. more than, you know, half the class zooming in. Of course. We're losing. Of course. Mm -hmm. of course. So that's my first question. Thank you for it. We, um, most kids aren't sick too often, and that's good. Second question is, you had mentioned that if they have a free period, that may be number two. What's the information? If they start the T period, I'm so sorry, you're cutting in and out, so I've kind of lost you. Maybe you could put that in the Q&A? Um, yeah, so I sent her a message. If she can type it to me, then I can bring it back up here. Okay. The next person. Perfect. Thank, Thank you. you. All, right. Um, all right. Next, we have <clears throat> Nihal, or I might be messing up your name. I, please forgive me. Um, so, one second. All right. So, go ahead, Nihal. Hello, uh, it's so nice uh, to talk to you and to see you talking. You are doing a wonderful uh, job educating our students here during the COVID. I had one question. Uh, my child is in ninth grade and we took a transfer to come at Granite Bay because we like the school and the staff. Uh -huh. he, we are going to go for the online academy from May uh, till May. So then in the 10th grade, would I need to fill the transfer form again to come to Granite Bay or he would be considered as a Granite Bay student? Yeah, he will be Granite Bay all the way. So um, the only thing I, I get nervous about answering registration questions. So, but, um, but for this spring term, we still own uh, every kid, every teacher and every kid we still own. It's just a temporary solution for the springtime. 
Okay, so it's no matter they are in the online academy, if they are, they are, they have entered the Granite Bay, they are Granite Bay kids. Exactly. Okay, thanks a lot. Thank You're you. You're welcome. Thank you. Um, next, we have Ryan. Go ahead, Ryan, if you could unmute and. Oh, I think that she, this is um, Sandy. I think she answered the question previously, but my question was if your child is sick just with a cold or a flu or allergies or whatever, are they able to zoom in for that day or two days or whatever and not having to miss class if there is the Zoom option? Yeah. This, this question, again, makes me a little nervous because I don't want it to be the default of, oh, I kind of got up late. I don't feel like getting out of my PJs. Um, we will need a call from a parent. It wouldn't just be an automatic, I'm going to just zoom in. Um, and, but as you mentioned, we aren't going to want somebody here on campus who has a fever. So I need to work on a protocol for that, but it actually helps teachers if they don't have to catch kids up after kids have missed several days. So I would think we'd work something out, but again, it's not gonna be the default for, eh, I just don't feel like coming to school today. So okay. can I add one thing to that? Yeah. Um, so um, we still will be plan to continue using uh, the Screener 19 okay. platform. So if that was happening, the easiest way to report it, um, if you weren't able to get a hold of somebody in the morning would be to fill it out on that form report that you have symptoms then somebody would follow up with you. Um, but we will, it's like Ms. Layton said, be figuring out a, a protocol for those situations, but we still, you know, it's much appreciated if people were filled out any of those questions, symptoms or anything like that on the screen of form, and then they could fo be followed up with on the nurse, by the nurse. Right, that's a good point. Thank you for reminding us of that. Thank you. Um, Next, we have M.W. M.W. Hi, um, you may have already uh, addressed this, but, and I missed it. The in-person teachers, are they all of your usual Granite Bay teachers? Yeah. Um, I think a lot of us like having the high quality teachers. So uh, are, it, it, would that be an advantage to going in-person because you have all Granite Bay or is it uh, anyone else could come in? Well, yes and no. <laughs> um, for the most part, it would be your regular Granite Bay High School teachers. Now, as I kind of mentioned before, some of our Granite Bay teachers are applying to teach in the academy and they are going to leave a vacancy. Some of the other sites might have too many teachers and we have a vacancy, so a teacher could get transferred over but you are much more likely to have a full schedule of Granite Bay High School teachers on ground. In the academy, it's for sure you won't have all Granite Bay teachers. In fact, you might have none if that's important to you. There's a lot of great teachers all over the district. Um, so it's not a huge concern, but if you just have relationships and you know, you're excited to see these teachers you thought you were getting, I completely understand. And I would choose in person unless there's some health concerns. That's always gotta be your number one reason. Thank you. Mm -hmm. All right, um, thank you. So the next person we have is Steve Lenz. Okay, great. Hi, Sarah, good evening, how you doing? Good, thanks. Hi, Steve. I've got two boys at Granite Bay. Um, one of them's a senior and he's one of only four folks or four kids at your school that's a National um, Merit Scholar semifinalist. And mm -hmm. just, finished, just finished his uh, application to Stanford. So it's pretty important that he maintain that rigorous schedule. And he signed up for, I don't know, six or seven AP classes. Uh, at the same time, he's struggling with contamination OCD and spent three months over the summer, six hours a day dealing with that. So we're kind of in an untenable position. Mm -hmm. You are side, you know, does he go and deal with that on site and lose a bunch of his AP classes? Um, I'm looking at the list here. It looks like he's in that year-long AP Gov, Law and Justice, Micro Macroeconomics, AP Computer Science. Um, I, I mean, it's just a tough position. Is there any yeah. chance for 
or some sort of arrangement for someone like that? I mean, he's really struggling. Right. Um, <laughs> yes, I would ask you to reach out to your counselor who will work with me and let's look okay. and see, um, like AP Computer Science, that's easily done online. I, I could see something like that. Maybe I'll regret promising that right now in front of everyone. But in a special circumstance, um, yeah, we, we would probably want to talk more. So I would ask you to start with your son's counselor and then we'll go from there. But you're going to want to sign up for on ground because we are going to work on those special arrangements. Okay, and then just one last comment on the survey. Uh, I, I noticed that somebody pointed out that the, you know, the online went from 60 percent to ten percent. And I will say that, you know, because of what I just mentioned, we signed up for on campus because we thought we we're going to lose all those AP classes. So, I, I guess the question is, if you did the survey and people understood that, you know, I, and you had sixty percent of the people responding online, then would that have changed the amount of AP classes you were offering online? I, I don't know. It just seems like the survey. There's an issue with the survey. Yeah, we're kind of learning as we go along. Um, and I realize that the this week's results, after they have all of this information, choices may change. We may have a lot more people wanting to go online. I, so I, I need to, so it sounds like I need to sign up on campus and then work with Nicholas's uh yes. counselor. Yes. Okay. We'll go from Thanks. there. Thanks. All right, thank you, Steve. Um, next we have Priya. Sorry, I accidentally muted you, Priya. <laughs> you there, Priya? Okay. Yes, this is Priya. Hey, um, Miss Layton and all the teachers yes. and staff of Granite Bay. First of all, I want to say a huge kudos to you guys for an awesome job that you have done in the fall and the, uh, and the spring of last year, especially turning around quickly and getting the kids online. And uh, my daughter has benefited a lot, a lot out of it. But I'm, I'm, I'm really, really concerned now. And uh, as the previous uh, person who um, talked uh, correctly alluded to, last week we didn't know what we were doing. Uh, the information wasn't clear, mm -hmm. um, and uh, so I'm really baffled because um, Kriti actually is taking um, three, um, three or four uh, AP and IB classes, which stretches across the whole year. Um, the, the IB uh, bio chem combo and then IB business. Mm -hmm. And she's going to take a couple of more AP classes next week, next uh, semester. So I'm like baffled uh, to see what to do. I mean, how do I go about this? Safety is in uh, question here. Um, so what would you recommend? Like, and I'm talking to, I mean, I, I did see your comment about special. Um, yeah. special yeah. So how would you <laughs> advise and what, what, what is your advice now? Yeah. <laughs> Well, you know, if we weren't building a, a plane while in flight, yeah, exactly. <laughs> we might have thought about some of these things ahead of time. So, um, again, I'm going to ask you to sign up for on ground because those I forgot about that uh, IB Chem slash AP Bio year long thing. Mm -hmm. That is not something that's going to be accommodated in the virtual academy. And she's only halfway through that. So let's have you reach out to your counselor. I also, um, Mr. Sloan is the keeper of all lists. I was gonna mention that um, you can email Mr. Sloan too, as we try to figure these out. Maybe your counselor and copy Mr. Sloan. Um, you wanna wave your hand, Mr. Sloan? Hi, I'm Mr. Sloan. <laughs> um, <laughs> um, so the problem is that when we sent the survey out, we only knew what we knew. <laughs> that was really profound. But we um, hadn't, as obstacles come up, then we think, aha, we have to address it. And that's what happens when you're doing something for the first time. And while I would love to predict every possible wrinkle in the plan, we weren't able to do that. So um, even amongst the principals, we've had some confusion how we thought things were rolling out. And I realize sometimes there are some mixed messages and um, we're going to do our best to take care of uh, kids. Let me just put it that way. So if you have concerns, reach out to your counselor, con uh, copy Mr. Sloan, and then we're going to work together to do whatever we can do. Now, we can't be all things to all people and some tough choices will have excuse me, have to be made. But IB, I understand you've paid for those, they're year-long classes. In some cases, they're two year-long classes and you're um, 
your diploma, your IB certificate is at risk. So um, we will, that will be one of those that we'll have to look closely at. Okay, so so I'm trying to still, so you think um, if these two things could be taken care of, we could actually sign online and deal with it. Is that what I'm hearing from you? Or I'm trying to still, or should we do in so person? What I, would, what I would say is that <clears throat> the IB class that you referenced classes and the AP or mm -hmm. IB Chem AP Bio Block, those, you got it. those we will deal with online, uh, zooming in, um while the rest of the class is on ground for the other two classes we just have to look at the other things that you signed up for um you might take those other two classes in the virtual academy or it might be the case of with the timing that we would have to figure out something for the entire day if um if you're saying that she absolutely needs to be online okay but so i i will I will send a note to uh, Ms. Tasman and also copies to yes. uh, Mrs. Lawn. And I really appreciate your time and all the work that you got. Kudos to the whole teachers. And I'm, I'm not even kidding. I've been praising Granite Bay across to all the other district community and stuff like that. So thank you again. Right. Thank you so much. Thank you, Priya. All right, um, next we have Stella. Hi, uh, thank you for having this. Uh, uh, Zoom meeting for clarification. So yeah, my daughter, she's, uh, she wants to attend the, not the online, the Roosevelt Academy, but she wants to be at school. But my, my question is, what if in the middle of that school year, there is the, the you know, the virus becomes bad and so mm -hmm. the, the schools will be closed. So <clears throat> will the kids go back to distance learning? Mm -hmm. Yeah, they very, we could, um, the board could make the call that we're going to distance learning like that, okay. but we will remain separate from the virtual academy okay. from here on out. We're separate. So they're going to stay virtual. We might have to go virtual. We might have to go hybrid, but they will, the two will not mix again. Yeah. Trying to so, separate. so when, yeah, so thank you for that. So when they go back to school, will there be like really like a strict observance of the social distancing and everything? Are you going to put plexiglass between the students? How, what is the protocol? Mm. Yeah, that's, that's a tough one. Um, we are going to, you know, have hand sanitizer, have desk cleaning. We're going to have masks on. Um, each teacher will set up their own classroom. They eat, they have plexiglass. We don't have enough plexiglass for every student to have plexiglass around them. Um, there are goggles available. Apparently, um, you can you can contract the the um, the virus through your eyes. So if yes. you would like to wear it, you can. We're not going to force anybody to wear the goggles because you're not infecting anyone by not wearing them. But I don't see the six feet apart happening. Um, teachers are going to mm. monitor masks. It's very important to them. We are going to mm. monitor as best we can. But you have to keep in mind, if there's 1,800 kids on campus, we're not going to catch everything. Yeah, so, that's, that's, that's the main problem. Like, how will they observe that? Yeah, I think that's one of the main deterrent of the Bible, you know, not to be close with each other. So, yeah, I really cannot decide. <laughs> it's I know, so it's hard. A it, it, and then it is, one more yeah. thing for the band, if they go to the Roswell Academy, so she will be at home. And then if she's in the band, how will, it, how will that work? Will she be going physically to practice with the other groups? Okay, so this is the hard one. It will be impossible to zoom into band. The, you know. They'll be rehearsing right there in the classroom. And mm -hmm. if you're choosing the virtual academy, then you're saying it's for safety's sake. So it wouldn't make sense to come over here for in-person ban. Plus, you wouldn't be able to get home in time to Zoom for your second period. Your next, yeah, so, because, oh, God. So this, I know, it's like Sophie's choice, right? It's just, um, it's a tough one. Yeah. Well, my only hope is that you will really do something about the social distancing, you know, that six feet is really important. Mm -hmm. between students otherwise maybe the parents would just like to provide and help the school pay for this plexiglass between them because that's the only deterrent I have seen from other countries that's how they have been doing in Taiwan right now is zero COVID because of that so uh, if 
If yeah. that country can do it, why can't we? I mean, you That's know, a good point. This is America, for goodness sake. Yeah. Yeah, that is scary. Yeah. I've even seen, um, I've seen at other schools, um, shower curtains, clear shower yeah. curtains. Uh-huh. I'm actually, shower curtains. I think plexiglass. They're cheaper. If I have seen other schools in other states. Yeah. They, have, they have done that, private schools. So I don't know if the parents would yeah. like to buy for each child. I mean, it's our children's health. You know, we don't want them to get sick. So it's just a suggestion. Maybe you should consider thinking about getting plexiglasses for all those students who will be going physically, you know, in the next semester. Yeah, I just don't, I don't want to make any promises, but I, But please, can we bring our own plexiglass? Then? I, <laughs> I actually wouldn't be opposed to that. If you yeah. said, you know, this is my plexiglass for my student and I want it on every one of their desks. Yeah, but but if the school will source it out, you know, if we buy it in groups, it would be cheaper, you know. So maybe you can, I don't know, maybe the parents would be, I don't know. <laughs> but for me, it's yeah, really I don't know. I think um, yeah. we do have a, a, some plexiglass. And like I said, we've got goggles, but I, I don't want to make any promises in that area. But yeah. I don't want to yeah. say no, no, never. Yeah. You know, but at this time, there are no plans for that. Let me put it that okay. way. Okay. Thank you. Thank You're you. You're welcome. Okay, Thank you, Sarah. All right. Um, we have three more hands. Next, we have Leslie. Hi, Leslie. Hi, good evening. Um, I have a two-part question. My son is a junior and we found out that in the spring schedule that he received, uh, one of the classes was not gonna be offered anymore. And he's been in the Roseville, or excuse me, the virtual academy um, for this past season or this past semester. Now that poses a problem because if I want him to do that in the spring, another class is now not offered. So now I'm down two classes going into spring and I have to make my decision today. I've been working with his counselor, but we're not quite following each other or not understanding what we're looking for. So I'm, I'm hoping you can answer this question. I hope so too. Can you tell okay, me the, what course is not gonna be offered that was gonna be offered? Well, that's the thing. Ceramics obviously isn't oh. going to be because I'm assuming either A, it's not being offered at all, or it's just because he's at the home. I gave the counselor five additional classes. All of them are unavailable to him. All alternates, Spanish, peer connections, uh, photography, um, group fitness, all of them were a music appreciation as, as what the website shows that you're offering. And it says that's not being offered at Granite Bay. That's correct. That's offered through the virtual academy. So now I feel as we're approaching now our senior year and I have not fulfilled the visual arts or fine art language, I'm feeling compelled that now I have to force my son to go back because he's got to get this requirement done before, you know, I don't want to leave it to the end of his senior year to do. Okay. okay, I want to make sure that um, just that I'm understanding this and we've got to be, we've got to close this down fairly quickly. Um, Sure. So you're, when you say he's in the virtual academy, you're saying right now he's in our C group. So he's fully online. Yes. You were hoping to take ceramics, which you actually have to take art one before you take ceramics. So that's well, one. I, when we signed up for this, whatever, last August, mm-hmm. um, it said I would in the, when we received our receipt, it said that um, schedule change will be necessary. Well, no one contacted me throughout this whole fall season about what I need to prepare for, for next semester until I approached it on Monday with the counselor. And all they told me is that's, you can still take ceramics, I guess, but it has to be on campus. We just can't yeah. provide it at home. No one told me anything of that he didn't get art. That wasn't even anything I asked for in August. Okay, okay. So you are hoping that he can take ceramics, but they're not offering it in the virtual academy and it's not something you can zoom into here. It's Obviously, just, yeah. So I, and since I can't get any replacement classes, I feel like now I have to send him to school. So you want him to stay in the virtual academy? 
I would like to, he okay. would like to, but okay. I'm concerned that we're not going to, we're going to get towards graduation and he hasn't fulfilled all his requirements. So I'm curious about, um, and maybe we can continue this later um, sure. through email, but music appreciation is offered through the virtual academy and our counselor shouldn't have told you. Yeah, I have the email saying that it is not being offered at Granite by High School. And That's true. I, That's well, true. It's not being do offered it virtual Granite. though. It's offered through the Roseville Virtual Academy. So if he's going pure virtual academy, then music appreciation can definitely be one of his classes. Well, okay. let me be careful about definitely. They're still providing the staffing. Depends on which elective teachers they end up getting where they settle in. But um, it is on the intention or intended list to offer. So okay, so I, you I think it's okay, still so maybe so maybe the the counselor was assuming that I was going to come back and I was trying not to go that route. So okay, can you forward that email to me and let me try sure to make sense of it, and then I'll work with your counselor. Okay, and then one last thing, if I may. Uh -huh. um, Last semester, we had signed up for the CTE program for automotives, and I guess maybe that was maybe the class that was cut out. Oh, but yeah. since then, um, as of yesterday, I found out it's active. He can sign up again, but in the teacher, the counselor said something about the fourth period, he can go to the fourth period or the fourth period, he could take an off period class and take the class at night. I'm confused. What yeah. does that mean? Well, okay, so I, I'm not real caught up on all of this, but we offer a very limited amount of, it used to be called ROP. Um, right. Because we don't have automotive here on this campus. So what happens is we usually give a student um, a period off and they travel to another site to take that course. I'm not current on the list. Mr. Sloan might be um, if he's working on the course catalog, but that's going to be another case where I'm going to have to look at that. Um, we don't have any control over what's offered through, uh, I think it's basically Placer County. Um, so it's very possible they've changed their offerings or they're not offering it anymore. I thought we were down to very, very few of those courses being offered. So go ahead and email me those things. And let I me will. So in this scenario, is my answer to even with the ROP class or auto class, is it virtual online or do I have to say we're coming five days a week? I'm not sure which way I'm supposed to apply. <laughs> I, bruh, I am going to say virtual because your intention is to be fully virtual and that CTE course is not actually our course. And then I'll work together. Um, you'll send me that email and I'll work with Mr. Fisher and help to explain your situation. He actually used to work used to head up that program before he came back to this district. So we'll figure something out, but I'm going to say virtual because okay. your intention is not to zoom into anything on ground here. Right. Okay. Perfect. Thank you. You're welcome. All right. So we have, looks like five more hands raised, but we do have a limited amount of time because yeah, we, we can go to till 545, but then Roseville High School, I have to get out of the Zoom so they can start there. So we'll just get as far as we can. I'll try to be very succinct. So if you can limit it to one question, um, and then if you have follow-up questions, you can send emails. That'd be great. Thank you. Next, we have Isha. Yeah. Hi, this is Isha's mom, Sangeeta. Uh, Isha has also joined the call, so she did her name. Uh, yeah, so uh, first thing, I want to thank you, everyone, for conducting this uh, webinar, uh, informing us, like, uh, a lot of information, so it's very helpful. Uh, but again, with limited time crunch, we need to make the decision. I had some few questions. Uh, okay. like, uh, like the other person asked about, you know, like, AP computer science and some things, you know, like, if we have known better, known earlier, we would have opted for RSVLA versus uh, on campus because we didn't know like any AP courses will be offered. So we went for on campus option. Uh, but after getting the, uh, you know, the information course list, like for my daughter's case, you know, we have like two AP courses in RSVLA uh, instead of three or four if we uh, have gone to school. 
So I am wondering, uh, for example, AP Computer Science is not offered in RSVLA. Like if we go with RSVLA option, uh, is there a way we could zoom in? Like how IB courses or like some other courses that you can accommodate, does this come under like a special circumstance? Is your daughter a senior? A junior. Okay, so she could take AP Computer Science next year. Yeah. Yeah, that's right. But we have like a next year also pretty much planned for eight AP courses, but we are losing some AP courses. You know, if she has gone to school, she would have got more AP courses. So uh, we are kind of wondering how can, uh, so basically we have to go with non-AP course options. Is that what you are saying? We cannot zoom in or? Well, I'm just saying it would have to be a unique and compelling reason to zoom somebody into AP. IB, it makes total sense, but AP. Okay. Um, okay. it's, uh, we haven't even started that class yet. She could take it a different year. We can switch the order of things. This is just a okay. temporary solution for okay. the spring term. Okay. So I understood. So I was come, doesn't come under that category. So my, the follow up question is, uh, do we lose class rank? Because like, let's say a student who is going to school, uh, might have an opportunity to take all AP four course, four AP courses. Whereas in our case, now we have only two. Uh, because we are planning with the RSVLA option. So how does the rank uh, plays into role? Yeah, but again, you're choosing, if you're choosing your health, then you, I, I that's, uh, I know it's a tough rank. choice, but you've got to decide, is your health more important or your class ranking? I, that's, it's, and yeah, honestly, I'm working furiously to get rid of class rank because I think it just leads us all in the wrong direction. Um, but if that's more important to you than the health concerns, then yeah, um, you're going to have more options for more AP classes on ground. Yeah it's, yeah, it's not only the rank, even the GPA also goes down, right, when compared to other kids. So being a junior year, which is very important personally than senior year, I feel like junior is very important. So uh, mm -hmm. just having a tough time deciding it so yeah. yeah that's that's a tough choice but i don't think i can fix that one okay right. okay thank you so much uh -huh. thank you isha all right so next we have daniel Yes, hi. Actually, I wanted to address uh, several of the questions that I've seen come up multiple times in the Q&A that you guys haven't talked about yet. Um, first and most importantly, you've got such a small group of students on campus now, and many students and many parents have concerns and complaints that students aren't wearing masks properly already on campus. So how are you planning on addressing and monitoring uh, the, the mask wearing? If you're not going to be social distancing the kids, how are you planning on enforcing mask wearing? I have not been made aware of one instance where a kid wasn't wearing a mask properly, nor have I seen a kid not wearing a mask. Well, properly. if you read through your questions here, you can see several examples. I saw at least six or seven examples of students uh, and parents being concerned about that exact issue. Where did that information come from? I'm, I don't know. I'm reading the questions okay. that are in the- Well, it issue. could I'm be, you know. I, so, so then let me ask you the other question I'm concerned about as well. I'm told that hybrid is not, I just wanted to confirm what you said earlier. Hybrid is not an option because it is too expensive. That's basically what you've been saying? No, you're taking one piece out of a very long answer. Um, hi, that is one of the concerns about hybrid, but it is not an effective instructional model. And what our intention has been all along was to get kids back onto campus in January. But again, I, I, don't I, I appreciate the importance of getting them on campus, but I, what I don't appreciate is what feels to be the reckless way in which you guys are doing this. Okay, well, I, I, I'm, not, I'm sorry, I'm not sure how to respond to that. The last thing I would ask is it's been asked several times on the questions here, and I, why is it that the deadline for the questionnaire cannot be extended past tonight at midnight? Well, again, I don't decide that deadline, but I will tell you that we have got to get going on staffing this academy. So um, that's why the deadline was placed that way. Okay, thank you. Mm -hmm. All right, thank you, Daniel. Um, <clears throat> the next, next we have Sandra. Hi, thank you. Um, so I just wanted to follow up on the slide about quarantining and it had mentioned six feet from the case or the person that um, tested positive. So essentially that could potentially mean 
a quarter of the class or a third of the class, if it's a tight, small classroom with a lot of students would potentially quarantine for 10 days. And then if they returned, if there was another case and there was another set of quarantine, we could potentially see quite a lot of disruption through, through this process. Is that, am I reading, am I understanding that correctly? Or will the entire class quarantine for a 10 day period? <laughs> uh, <laughs> Well, we are right now trying to use that uh, radius of six feet. I mean, it's just every situation is so separate. Like, did kids get up and work in groups? Um, did kids um, walk past each other desks to turn in papers? I mean, we, we just have to determine that individually. But yeah, it's possible that we could end up in a lot of quarantine type situations. Okay. And then in those situations, we would be offered Zoom opportunities to mm -hmm. Zoom in. Absolutely. Okay. Thank you. Okay. I think we have time for one more. Okay. So um, last one, we have Shreya. Mrs. Shreya. Layton and the <laughs> vice principals and the staff at Granite Bay, I would like to thank you very much for uh, getting on with the show through the COVID-19 situation. I have a question. My daughter is a senior at Granite Bay and she needs two classes to graduate. And one of, both of those were uh, uh, AP classes. And right now they are going to be offered only on the on-campus thing. My question is, can she just zoom in for those two classes and take the other two classes maybe at uh, community college. So that would be another case where I would say I would need to know, because again, we're not as worried about AP as we are about the IB where the kids are halfway through the year. So I would need to know which AP classes those are and what is the unique and compelling reason that she absolutely has to have those. And then on top of it, um, we could troubleshoot from there. Now there is, um, and this isn't something that uh, we want everybody to run and go do, but there is Independence High School that does have some AP courses, so that might be worth looking into. So that's why I would reach out to your counselor and see what else is available, and then um, we'll troubleshoot from there. Okay. But your um, every student has to show proof of 240 minutes of um, instruction, so she has to take at least three classes, if not four, depending on um, depending on the length of our classes, but if she went to independence, there are different rules for independence high school. So that's something she could do there. Thank you. You're welcome. Okay, so like I said, I am sorry, I'm gonna have to cut us off here so Roseville can get set up and get going. Um, further questions can be sent. Um, mm -hmm. it, again, um, Hopefully not questions we've already answered, but if there's something else that we didn't get answered, please feel free to reach out. I'll do my best to work on those, knowing that you've got to turn in your form by 11.59 tonight. I want to thank all of you for coming. It's exciting to have about 200 of you and um, to hear from you and i um, excited to move into this next phase. So thank you very much. And to my AP team, thank you. Is there anything I've forgotten to tell the parents that you want to remind me of? Are we good? Okay. All right. Then everyone have a great night and uh, we'll see you soon. <laughs>